morning, church. I don't mow the lawn when it's snowing. Anyway, today I want to take you to Luke chapter 18. It says this, Jesus took the twelve aside and told them, We are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. He will be delivered over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, and spit on him. They will flog him and kill him. On the third day, he will rise again. Now, this is the part of the passage that is most amazing to me. Verse 34. The disciples did not understand any of this. Its meaning was hidden from them, and they did not know what he was talking about. Now, let's just review what Jesus said. Jesus took the twelve aside, and he told them, so this is just the twelve, just the, the guys we call the disciples. He says, we are going up to Jerusalem. Let's see. For us, we don't realize that Jerusalem was always up from wherever you are in Israel because Jerusalem was the location of the temple because there was a hill in the middle of Jerusalem where the temple was located. Um, anywhere in Israel, even if it had a higher elevation, even if it was north or south, it didn't matter. Jerusalem was always metaphorically up. So Jesus says we're going up to Jerusalem. They should have understood that. Then he says, everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. Okay, well that's something they didn't really understand. They didn't understand that the Old Testament prophecies actually said that the servant who was supposed to come would suffer for our iniquities, that uh, his stripes would bring us healing. Uh, they, they didn't remember any of the passages from Isaiah 53, and I've talked about that before in other contexts. But Jesus here is saying something, that all the stuff that was written about him and the prophets will be fulfilled. Now, easily they could have asked the question, Jesus, well, what is it that is going to be fulfilled? Explain it to us. But, but they didn't. Instead, they just continued to listen, and Jesus said this, he will be delivered over to the Gentiles. Well, that's pretty obvious. The Gentiles were the Roman people who were in control of the entire ancient world. Uh, the Jewish people had a portion of control, but the Romans were really in control, and they were all Gentiles. So Jesus said he will be delivered over to the Gentiles. So that makes sense. It says they will mock him, insult him, and spit on him. Okay, well, that also should make sense. I mean, if, if you're the the religious leader of the Jewish people and the Gentiles now have control over you in some fashion, then, then of course they're going to mock you and spit on you and insult you. That, that makes perfect sense. It says they will flog him and kill him. Well, they did that a lot. The Roman people did the flogging thing a lot. They did the killing thing a lot. They were really good at it. And Jesus says, on the third day he will rise again. Now, that is the only part of this passage that I think should surprise you. On the third day, he will rise again. But by this point in time, the disciples have seen Jesus raise other people from the dead. By this point in time, the disciples have seen Jesus raise Lazarus four days dead from the dead. The fact that Jesus has the power to come back to life after death shouldn't have surprised them. Here's the part of it that surprises me. Even though Jesus was absolutely clear on what was about to happen, the disciples did not understand any of this. Its meaning was hidden from them, and they did not know what he was talking about. And now, because of, the, because of the sentence being in the passive tense, its meaning was hidden from them. You might be able to conclude that God intentionally hid this message from them. Uh, God has done that in the past. Uh, there have been some times in the Old Testament where God specifically prevents a person from understanding what is going on. And so it could be that. Its meaning was hidden from them. But just because the sentence is in the passive tense doesn't mean that God is responsible for what's going on here. It can also just simply mean that they were oblivious. They had no understanding of the meaning, and so the meaning was hidden from them. Here's the thing that passages like this say to me. They consistently say to me that no matter how clear God's word is, 
unless I have his help, I'm not going to understand it. No matter how clear God's word is, I am just as likely to be blinded to it as the disciples were. Jesus was literally standing in front of them. Jesus literally said, I am going to be handed over to the Gentiles. I will be flogged and tortured. I will be killed and I will rise again. He said it in the most explicitly clear way he possibly could say it, and they still didn't understand any of it. Isn't it arrogant for us, 2,000 years removed from Jesus, to look at the scripture and feel like we've got it all nailed down? I mean, granted, we have something that the disciples didn't have. We have the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives. The disciples did not have that. The Holy Spirit came on the disciples after Jesus was resurrected. He said, wait here in Jerusalem, the Holy Spirit will come on you. When he comes on you, he will teach you all things and you will not need any additional teacher. That's wonderful. Paul also says that one of these days, perfection is going to come. And even though they saw through a glass darkly, one of these days we will be able to see clearly. But none of that predicts the fact that you and I are somehow better than the disciples at deciphering what the Word of God means. I believe we have to be humble people. Listen, if you think you understand what God's Word means, if you think you understand what God's Word means all by yourself, then you're missing something. Because guess what? No one has ever been able to understand what God's word means all by themselves. You need the Holy Spirit, and I believe you also need the help of some other people who have the Holy Spirit. Listen, we're in a time of uncertainty and weirdness, and I want to ask that you would drive yourself right back to the word of God. If you're bored, spend some time with Scripture. If you're bored, spend some time uh, hearing some messages from God's Word. Uh, go back to some of the previous ones I've taught. Find another pastor that you appreciate and listen to his stuff too. But read God's Word for yourself. And pray and ask for God to guide you and to give you wisdom and insight. Because frankly, you and I, just like the disciples, are probably not going to understand a whole lot, at least at first. But eventually there comes a time when Jesus is crucified, when Jesus does rise from the dead, when Jesus does explain what the prophets had said about him, and the disciples have their eyes opened and they understand. I believe it'll happen for you too. I believe it'll happen for me. I believe the more we spend our time with God's word, the more we get an understanding of what he's really trying to say. But let me just reassure you. One, we don't know as much as we think we know. And two, there's a whole lot more Jesus is ready to show us. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, would you guide us today to be open to your word and to be open to what you have for us. Expand our minds beyond where we've already been. Help us to be humble as we read your word, but open up our eyes to the bigger world in which you are drawing us. Lord, would you... Would you just speak into our hearts today and reassure us that you are good, that you are God, and that you have a plan that has been working out in perfection for many, many years. Lord, just draw us close to yourself. Thank you so much. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a great day.